Hey everybody, in this video we're going to continue talking about logarithmic functions and specifically we are going to be solving log functions. So we did all these other objectives in the previous videos, so now we'll be solving log equations. Alright, so let's jump right into this example. Notice what we have. We have an equation in part A and also in part B where there's an equal sign, so it is an equation, and there's a log, so that's why we call it a log equation. So we're going to solve each one for x. And notice x is in the argument position in part A, but it's in the base position in part B. And so the thing to remember, and we talked about this previously, is the definition of a log function, because this is going to help us rewrite it as an exponential function. And so we have y equals log base A of x, and y, that's the exponent. So watch when you rewrite it in exponential form, your base A, has an exponent of y. The log always equals the exponent, so that's always what's on the other side of this equal sign. So that becomes the exponent, and a is your base, so it's still your base here, and then what it, that expression equals is whatever the argument is right over here after log. Okay, so we're going to use that definition to rewrite our log functions as exponential functions, uh, log equations, excuse me, as exponential equations, so we can solve. All right, so we're going to change to exponential form. So notice the base is 5, the log equals 3, so that's going to be 5 to the third power, and then what that expression equals is the argument after log, so that equals 3x minus 4. So we just used log form, rewrote it in exponential form. And now from here, this is nice because we can solve this no problem for x. So just doing a couple steps, solving for x, 5 to the third power is 125, add 4 to both sides, and then last step, just divide by 3, and you're going to get that x is 43. Now one thing you do want to do is you want to check your solution because if you recall for your log functions, the argument can't be negative, it needs to be positive. Also, if you're ever solving for the base, which we're going to do in the next um, part B, the base also has to be positive, it, and it can't be 1 either. So you do want to check to make sure, you're, in this case, that your argument is positive, and that it equals what it should equal, in this case, 3. So if we plug in our answer right here, we have log base 5, of 3 times 43 minus 4, and if we simplify that, we're going to get log base 5 of 125, so this is greater than 0, so that's the first thing we want to notice, so this is good to go, and then we just want to verify that this is true, and it says that 5 to the third power is 125, which is correct, so that is our answer, 43. Alright, now same thing with the next one as far as our first step. We're going to change to log uh, from log form to exponential form. So the base is x and log equals 2. So the exponent is going to be 2. So we have x to the second power and that's going to equal the argument of 81. And then we just solve for x. And so in this one, you're going to take the square root on both sides. And remember when you do this, you want to put a plus and minus on the side with the number, and that's because if you go backwards, negative 9 squared as well as 9 squared, both of them are 81, so that's why when we do this direction, we want to put plus and minus. And so we have plus and minus 9, and now remember that you have to check this, so you technically have two solutions here, x is 9 and x is negative 9, but recalling that for our log functions, the base, we just talked about this, has to be positive. We have to exclude this answer here. So we only have the one answer that x is 9. And so if we check, not log base 9 of 81 is 2 because 9 to the second power is 81. So our solution set is only the positive value of 9. Okay, let's do one last example. This time we're going to start with an exponential equation and rewrite it in log form to solve it. So we're pretty much going the opposite direction as our last example. 
So notice we are starting with our form a to the x, uh, we'll say a to the y equals x. And so that's exponential form. Putting it in log form, the exponent is what the log equals. So in this case, y is what the log equals. It's always the exponent. And the base a is still the base for the log. And then the argument is whatever's on the other side of the equal sign. So for us, the base is e, the exponent is 3x, and so the log is going to equal the exponent. So here's what we have. Let's show the in-between step how we got this. So the exponent, 3x, is what the log equals. The base is e, and then the argument is what was on the other side of the equal sign. And now notice what we have here is ln, and that's because if you recall, natural log is the same as log base e. So whenever you see ln, natural log, it's the same as log base e. So we just had this step in between, and this is the result. So ln, our natural log of seven, is three x. And then from there, we can solve one step. x is just gonna be if we divide both sides by three. So divide both sides by three, and that's our exact answer. So we could use a calculator to get an approximate answer, but that's x, the natural log of seven over three. So if you type this into a calculator, you use your natural log button, and you get about 0.649. But this is the exact solution, so that's the one that you want most of the time. This one over here is still the answer, but it's an approximate solution. And so that's our solution set, and the, just to show you really quick, uh, we didn't have to do anything as far as making sure that this was positive because where x was at, it was in the exponent, and you can plug any numbers into exponents. So there was no restriction on what we can plug into the exponent there. So this answer is already okay. And But if you do want to check, you can verify that you got the right answer. You would want to probably use a calculator though, but I can show you how to do it algebraically here. So we want to make sure that our answer is really correct. Okay, so the three is to find out. So we have e to the ln seven equals seven. And this part here, I'm going to show you a property for this in just a minute, but let me help you make sense of this. So remember ln is base e. So e, this says e to the log base e of seven equal to seven. So this is a little funny because this says if you just focus on the exponent, if you just sort of zoom in on this part, this is asking you, well, uh, okay, let's write that again really quick. This is saying e, this means e to what power equals seven? Well, that that's already in the power position and that's what y equals. And so this is, that's just to verify that that's true. Okay, let me just give you some last properties to finish off this section. So you don't have to memorize these, but it might just be helpful to save you some time. And the first one is pretty much what we just saw. If we have a, our base raised to the log with the same base of some argument, then the answer here is just the argument, okay? And you can kind of think of these as like being redundant. A to the log base A as the power. It's asking the same question twice pretty much. So the answer is just x, whatever is in the argument. Another property is, and again, you don't have to memorize this, but um, it just makes your time a little quicker. If you ever have a one as the argument, the answer is zero. And if you think about it, it's because the way you get from a, some number raising it to an exponent back to one is because the exponent was zero. So I'm saying like three to the zero power, the only way to get a one out of that is because the exponent was zero. And then again, you could solve for this, but just a quick uh, show for you that if you, if you see this, you can just quickly say that this answer is one. Uh, you don't have to memorize it, but you can if you want. Just think about what it says. A to the first power is still itself, is still A. So anytime your base matches your argument, you're gonna just have your log equal to one. Okay, so those are just a couple of properties that are helpful when solving these equations. And so that's it for our logarithmic functions and equations. Thanks for watching.